Hi, my name is Huck, and today I'll be talking about joint work with Madi Taragchi, Vankad Guraswamy, and Joao Ribeiro. So the first object of study today will be lattices. So informally, lattice is a regular grid of points in Euclidean space. More formally, it's the set of all integer linear combinations of n linearly independent vectors b1 up to bn. So in this picture, we have a two-dimensional lattice so spanned by the basis vectors b1 and bn. So to define the most important computational problem on, on lattices, the shortest vector problem, and to recall the definition of an LP norm, which is just the pth root of the sums of absolute values of uh, the pth powers of absolute values of the coordinates. And uh, the LP minimum distance of a lattice is just the shortest non-zero vector in the lattice according to the LP norm. So then the shortest vector problem, which again is the most important computational problem on lattices, is given a lattice represented by a basis as input and some distance parameter k, the goal is to distinguish uh, whether a lattice has a, a vector of norm, a non-zero vector of norm at most k, or if all non-zero vectors in the lattice have uh, norm at least gamma k when one of these two is the case. So in this, this example, we're promised that either there's some non-zero vector inside of the blue circle or all non-zero vectors are outside of the red circle. And if we look at the full lattice generated by B1 and B2, we see that this is a yes instance of SVP because in fact, uh, there are non-zero vectors inside of the blue circle. So the fact that we have circles here as opposed to some other shape corresponds to the fact that we're working in the Euclidean norm where P is equal to two. But in general, uh, the circles would be LP unit balls. Okay, so the other fundamental object of study in this talk will be uh, linear error correcting codes. And linear error correcting codes are the finite field analog of lattices. So more formally, we have that the, the code generated by generator matrix G is just the FQ linear combination of some N linearly independent vectors G1 up to GN. So look, this looks very syntactically similar to, to the definition of a lattice. Just the main difference is that now we're taking uh, like everything's over a finite field. So we're working over FQ um, instead of allowing for, uh, for real basis vectors and for integer coefficients. And we define the minimum distance of a code analogously, but now we're just working with uh, the Hamming weight of vectors instead of LP norms. So just, um, so the minimum distance of a code is just uh, the minimum weight the minimum Hamming weight of a non-zero code word in the code. And then we have the fundamental problem, the minimum distance problem on, on codes, which is the analog of SVP. So here we're given a generator matrix of the code and a distance parameter as input. And the goal is just to decide whether the minimum distance is at most K or at least gamma K. Okay. So, but this is going to be a talk about the parameterized complexity of, of these problems of SVP and MDP. So what's the idea behind parameterized algorithms? So here we want to measure a complexity, not just in terms of the input length n, but also some other parameter k of the input. So that's kind of the setup, the main idea behind parameterized algorithms and complexity. So in, in this talk, the parameter of interest is going to be the distance parameter in the MDP or SVP instance. Here, um, this doesn't make any sense for SVP if for general lattices, like general real lattices. So we're going to assume that our lattices are integral, and we'll assume that the pth power of the distance parameter is an integer. And um, a parameterized problem is called fixed parameter tractable with respect to the parameter k if it has an algorithm running in f of k times poly n time. So this is a more relaxed notion than, than just polynomial time. So it's allowed to run in, in some like huge function of K uh, times the polynomial. 
uh, in n in the input length. So again, f, like f could be like two to the two to the two to the k or something, but still we require polynomial dependence on the input length. And this is the canonical notion of efficiency for parameterized problems. This is the the equivalent of p, the complexity of class p in the non-parameterized world. Um, so accordingly, we have FPT reductions between problems, uh, which between parameterized problems. Where all this means is like we uh, we take an instance of one parameterized problem as input, and then we have an FPT algorithm that outputs an equisatisfiable instance of, of another problem uh, as its output. So where equisatisfiable means that we map yes instances to yes instances and no instances to no instances. And for this, we also want to ensure that K prime, the parameter in the output instance of B, uh, does not depend on on n, which is like the the length of of x in the input. It only depends on the parameter k in the the instance of a. Okay, and then on the flip side of fixed parameter tractability, we have W one hardness, which is the canonical notion of inefficiency for parameterized problems. So, one equivalent way of defining this is the set of W one hard problems. It's a set of problems for which there exists FPT reductions from K clique to the problem. And uh, the standard kind of working assumption in, in uh, parameterized complexity is that the set of FPT problems is not equal to the set of, of W1 uh, um, problems. So, which in particular implies that uh, FPT, like if you can show that a problem is W1 hard, then there's no FPT algorithm for it, assuming this, um, this standard assumption, which is the parameterized analog of, of P not equal to NP. So this talk is actually about W1 hardness of these two problems that I introduced earlier, MDP and SVP. And actually a lot of what I'll be talking about is, is um, about hardness under randomized reductions where, so really we'll have some, we'll be kind of working with some assumption of the form like randomized FPT is not equal to W1, but I'm mostly gonna ignore that. Okay, so what's known about the hardness of these problems? So um, a very long line of work by many authors has shown that, that both MDP and SVP are NP hard to approximate within any constant factor. There's a whole slew of work that, that tries to show this. So, I mean, um, I don't have time to go into exactly what each of these papers show, but they show hardness with progressively um, larger approximation factors gamma and for um, more values of, of Q and P. And there's actually even additional work past, past these things. Um, so these problems are, are fundamental problems in lots of areas of computer science. They're kind of the core uh, most important problems for uh, on on error correcting codes and on lattices respectively, and they've received a special study for the case of Q equals two, which is binary codes for MDP, and P equals two, which is the Euclidean norm for SVP. Um, so here it's worth noting just one more time that hardness this hardness is only known under randomized reductions for SVP. One of the successes in this line of work for MDP, starting with Chang and Wang. That's a typo. It should be Wan, not Wang. Uh, in 2012, is um, getting deterministic hardness for MDP. Okay, but what about in the the parameterized world? Are these problems W1 hard? Where again, we're thinking about W1 hardness with respect to the distance parameter k. So Downey and Fellows, one of the seminal books on parameterized complexity, called MDP2. This question about MDP2, one of the most infamous infamous open problems in parameterized complexity. So in beautiful work from a couple of years ago, um, a whole slew of authors answered both of these questions. So specifically, they showed that gamma MDP2 is W1 hard to approximate within any constant factor, and that gamma SVP is hard to approximate to within some constant factor depending on P for every P greater than one. So again, their results, this awesome work from a couple of years ago, resolved both of these open questions in one work. Okay, but still, um, you know, despite answering these questions of Downey and Fellows and making huge progress on this, uh, the authors left open and asked about a few key things. So 
First off, what about MDP over general fields FQ? So their work just addressed the binary case where Q is equal to two. Also, what about the L1 norm? So their work had this kind of funny thing where it worked in basically all LP norms except for P equals one. So it works for P equals two, P equals five billion, P equals 1.001, but not P equals one. And finally, what about showing hardness of gamma SVP uh, in the LP norm, not just for some constant gamma, but for all constants gamma, right? So they only showed hardness for some relatively small uh, factor gamma. For, for any given uh, P, like the gamma for which they were able to show W1 hardness was less than two. Okay, so our, our results, the ones in the paper corresponding to this talk are as follows. So first, we answer the first question by showing that gamma MDPQ for every prime power Q uh, is W1 hard to approximate and for any constant factor gamma. Second, we show that SVP in the L1 norm is W1 hard to approximate for, for some constant gamma. Actually, for any constant gamma less than two. And finally, we show uh, that SVP and LP norms for P greater than one uh, is W1 hard to approximate to within any constant factor gamma. And this in particular includes the important Euclidean case of P equals two for which this result was not previously known. Okay, so in other words, there's, there's a one-to-one -one correspondence between these, these open questions in this, this previous work from 2021 and the main results in our paper. So we resolve all three of the main open questions in, in this previous work. Uh, they also asked about derandomizing uh, these reductions, but that's, that's uh, kind of an aside. But we answer all three of the main open questions from their work. And this very nearly completes the picture of the hardness, W1 hardness, parameterized hardness of uh, MDP and SVP, right? So there's just this one asterisk to, to all this, which is that uh, we, the only remaining thing is that, you know, for there's this kind of funny thing where uh, the L1 norm seems to be a bit different for the techniques we're using for showing hardness of SVP. So uh, in the L1 norm, we're only able to show hardness for uh, some constant. So like gamma is equal to 1.99 and not all constants. So there's, there's that that's still open, but we very nearly uh, resolved kind of this, this line of work. Okay, so this is kind of the, the key slide. This is like, we have the definitions of the, of the key problems. So this shows what we've done. So in, in my remaining time, I'll sketch as much as possible about the techniques that we use. A lot of what I'll, I'll say is actually about kind of um, just how we, you know, kind of looking at things that are known and kind of trying to say as much as I can about like the changes we needed to make to the existing techniques in order to get our new results. Okay, so um, the starting point for all of this is to look at how hardness reductions for MDP and SVP work. And a lot of what I'm gonna say kind of applies and was developed in the setting of showing NP hardness, but it also um, is relevant for the case of showing W1 hardness, like we're trying to show, but it's a little bit more nuanced. So, but anyway, kind of the, the main idea here is um, to reduce affine analogs of problems on codes and lattices to linear ones. So for codes, this means reducing the so-called nearest code word problem, which I'll define formally in just a second to MDP. And for lattices, it means reducing the closest vector problem to SVP. So the good news is that it's usually a lot easier to show hardness for the affine versions of problems. So in particular, uh, this prior work, showed that um, gamma NCP and gamma CVP are W1 hard to approximate within to within any constant factor gamma. So we can take that as our starting point and now just worry about reducing the affine versions of these problems to the linear ones. Okay, so in order to define NCP, I need one more definition, which is the distance between a target vector T and a code. And this is just what you think it is. So it's just the minimum Hamming distance between T and some code word in X in C. Uh, and then with this in mind, we can define gamma NCP, where now, so it's like MDP. So you get a, a 
generator matrix of a, of a code, you get a distance parameter k, but now you also get a target vector t as part of the input. And now the goal is to decide whether the input satisfies um, the distance between t and c being at most k or greater than, than gamma k. Okay, so um, uh, one thing you can see is that MDP is kind of almost this problem where t is taken to be the, the origin, the all zeros vector. The only problem with, with that is that um, kind of that intuition is that, uh, of course, um, in MDP, you're required to um, look at the distance between, or the minimum distance, minimum Hamming weight of a non-zero uh, code word. Whereas here, there's no stipulation about um, whether the closest code word is, is the zero code word or a different code word. Okay. So, but um, what we're trying to do is not think about how we could reduce MDP to NCP. We want to go the other way around. So we want to try to reduce MCP, NCP to MDP. And for this, we're going to use a variant of um, what's called Kanon's embedding, which is kind of about the simplest thing you could think of for, for trying to do this. So what are you going to try to do? So say we have this, this instance of NCP. What we're going to do is we're going to try to form an instance of MDP just by pretending that the more or less that the target vector is another um, another vector in the generator matrix of the code. So in other words, we're going to form a new generator matrix just by taking our original generator matrix and tacking on uh, T, or really we'll use minus T for convenience. And then um, assuming that T is not in the, the code to begin with, um, the minimum distance of this resulting code, uh, C of G prime, is equal to the, the minimum distance of, of the original code uh, and uh, the distance between uh, the target and that should be C of G, the, the code generated by um, the original uh, generator matrix G. Okay, and so what this, so the, the two terms in this, this set we're taking the minimum of correspond to, um, so if you're thinking about taking some uh, like G prime times some vector uh, X alpha, so it's like the coefficient vector that you're taking um, for of your, of your uh, short code word in G prime, again, the coefficient vector can't contain all zeros. So you kind of have case analysis like on kind of the last coordinate. And if it's the last coordinate is zero, it means you're just ignoring the fact that uh, you've added minus T to G prime and just looking at some code word in uh, the code generated by G. So that's the lambda C of G term in this min. And otherwise, so if the, the last coordinate is one, which you can assume without loss of generality, if, it, if it's non-zero, uh, that corresponds to the distance between T and some uh, code word in C of G. Okay. Okay. So does this reduction just work already? Well, for mapping yes instances of NCP to yes instances of MDP, it does. But... Um, the situation is a little bit trickier in the the no to no case, so it works uh, for um, if uh, if the minimum distance of the original code is sufficiently large, but it doesn't work if the minimum distance of the original code is uh, substantially smaller or smaller than the distance between the target and um, and the original code. And so, kind of the high level idea here is we want to ensure that that the minimum distance of the code, the starting code, is somehow larger than the distance between T and the original code. Okay, and that kind of brings us to um, one of the key ideas, the key idea that we used that was kind of led to the resolution of, of the first open question about showing W1 hardness of uh, MDP for uh, general over general fields FQ. And so the idea for this is to adapt the reduction from uh, code 05, which is seminal work, which showed um, hardness of approximation of SVP to within any constant factor for the first time. Um, so to adapt that reduction, which was originally shown in the context of SVP on lattices to MDP in codes. So we call this code for codes. Um, 
So the corresponding, there's like kind of the, the prior work that showed hardness for F2 uh, kind of also used an affine delinear reduction where they're reducing from NCP, but their reduction, which is more in the framework of, of uh, a reduction originally introduced by Itai and Machancho for lattices, only seems to work for F2. So, and we explained this in our paper, like there's technical reasons for why this seems to be the case. So we needed to do something else for, for FQ, for general Q. So it's worth noting that, so we, we kind of uh, found this already, but the main reduction, this, this idea of using um, an analog of Coates reduction for SV, hardness reduction for SVP on lattices already appears in the, the coding theory context in unpublished lecture notes of, of Coate from uh, 2004. So we, we discovered this afterwards. So we do a little, like our reduction is a bit more general. Um, so we work over not just binary fields, but general fields. And we, we work hard, you know, we ensure that um, the reduction is parameterized. So there's more that we do and need to do to make this work. But kind of the, the high level idea was just this observation that we could use um, uh, an analog of Coates reduction to bypass the difficulties that this prior work had in the F2 setting. And that uh, that largely appeared in this these lecture notes of code. Okay, so let's see. In my remaining time, I do not I don't have too much left, so I'll try to go quickly through this. So we use um, the kind of idea here is we also need uh, gadget code target pairs with no short non-zero vectors. So, but so no short vectors is how you should think about this, but lots of close vectors. So if, um, the notion of a Hamming ball of radius D. So just use this notation for that. And um, then kind of the idea, just at a high level, so I'll avoid talking about this too much, is just to define gadget codes or gadget uh, code target pairs that, that satisfy this. So that have no short non-zero vectors, but lots of close vectors. So here, um, I'm going to think about alpha as being the, the closeness parameter and think of it as being like 0.99 or something. So what this says is that um, the, the code generated by A has, uh, has no vectors, short, non-zero vectors shorter than D, but it has at least N vectors that are um, within distance alpha D of S. And one of the, the kind of main thing that we needed to show here in terms of is, you know, for constructing these gadgets, is you can actually build these things. They actually exist and are efficient to compute in a randomized sense. This is um, one of the places where we use randomness um, using BCH codes over FQ. So by Q area BCH codes. Okay, so how can we use these to modify uh, Kanan's reduction. So we do this, we have this direct sum construction now of, of a basis or a generator matrix G prime of a new code. So, and um, what you can analyze is that sort of in the SDS case, there will be um, at least N um, close code or N uh, close code words in the the lattice, or in the code generated by G A, just kind of everything except for the last column to the last column, and therefore um, the code generated by G prime will contain at least n short um, non-zero code words. On the flip side, assuming that we set parameters correctly, um, there won't be too many. Uh, um, short code words in the the no to no case. So kind of the final step, which um, again is an analog of, of what Coat does on on um, uh, for lattices is to take the intersection of the code generated by G prime with a random code and to set parameters so that the number of short vectors in the S case, is much higher than like at least a hundred times the number of short vectors in the no case. So that then if you um, set parameters for the random code correctly and keep each kind of code word with probability roughly one over N, 
with kind of high probability, you'll keep a, a short vector, short non-zero vector in the yes case, and you'll kill, you'll get rid of all of the short non-zero vectors in the no case. Okay, and so that just works. So just a few words about um, extending this to lattices and what we did for that, for SVP. Kind of the key idea actually is to build analogs of locally dense codes called locally dense lattices. So, which are gadgets of, of kind of that are analogous to locally dense codes, but for lattices. And actually, the key way in which we do this is to build locally dense lattices from codes, kind of in the simplest way you can imagine, which is called construction A. So, what we do is we take a code with some nice properties and then like a QRA code, and then we define uh, the lattice, like define a lattice from it, just by saying that now you can add multiples of Q to each of the coordinates. And specifically, we use locally dense lattices built from Reed Solomon codes over large fields. These were introduced in Bennett Piker 22. And we use locally dense lattices built from binary BCH codes. So, um, uh, like the item one here turns out to be the key to showing W1 hardness of SVP in the L1 norm. So, and this is kind of a, a cool application of, of those for the first time. So, People have been using uh, binary BCH codes in this, this business for a long time, but we had, uh, we use them, um, we kind of tweak other versions of, of the proof for, for our hardness of approximation result. So unfortunately, so I'm about out of time, but just, um, just to say quickly, so what we do to amplify hardness and get hardness of approximation for any constant factor is to take the the Kronecker product of, of um, generator matrices of codes or of uh, basis matrices of, of lattices. So this is a standard technique for amplifying hardness. It turns out to be fairly straightforward in the coding case and uh, actually uh, quite a bit more subtle for the lattice case. And actually the most technical part of our work is showing like how to get kind of uh, lattice bases that tensor nicely and um, are are still um, W1 like hard, W1 hard instances of SVP that that tensor nicely. Um, so that's yeah. So that's the kind of hard part to getting the third result in our work, the third new result. Okay, so to wrap up, so just as a reminder, so. These are the three bullet points for that we had before. So what do we show? So we showed hardness of approximation within any constant factor for MDP over any field FQ. And we showed, so we showed W1 hardness of uh, SVP in the uh, L1 norm, and we showed uh, W1 hardness of SVP in all LP norms for P greater than one uh, to within any constant factor gamma. So we also showed some uh, fine grained uh, results in the parameterized setting. So I won't explain these now, but basically we showed that kind of trivial um, algorithms for, for solving um, MDP or SVP in the parameterized world are actually um, nearly optimal in a certain sense. So still uh, this left open a couple of problems. So there's this one kind of annoying thing where like somehow SVP in the L1 norm has been more resistant to to our uh, you know to showing hardness than than the other um, norms. Uh, so there's that first thing. So again, as asked by prior work, I uh, can try to find deterministic reductions, hardness reductions for these problems. And finally, just related to the last thing I showed, could look for better fine grained hardness of approximation for parameterized SVP in different LP norms. So thank you very much for, for tuning in for the talk. Oh yeah, and check out the full version of our paper on, on archive. <laughs>